RxJS version 6 is out. And whilst this rally is worth an entire video, since Angular 6 uses it by default, this will actually affect quite a lot of projects. RxJX 6 introduces a lot of breaking changes, though most of the time you only need to change two things to make it work again. And if you really want to save time, you only need to execute one command to make all your old code work. How this works, let's have a look in this video. So before we dive into any of the breaking changes RxJS 6 introduces due to a changed project structure and so on, the quick fix you can run in any project which you're updating to RxJS version 6, so for example in an Angular project which you're updating to Angular 6 which needs RxJS 6, the quick fix you can run is npm install dash dash save RxJS compat. This extra library makes your old code work. So with that, your old imports, your old usage of operators, this all should continue to work fine. You don't need to change anything in your code. And it doesn't even add a lot to your uh, bundle size, so you're not even bloating your code a lot. This ensures backward compatibility and all old code shouldn't require any changes. So this is a great first step you can do so that you can then smoothly update step by step and you don't suddenly break your entire project. But why does it break at all? So what did really change? RxJS 6 introduces two very important changes in the end. The first one is a changed package structure internally. They reorganized things to make the bundle smaller and also to make imports easier. Therefore, we basically have to update all our import statements and how we use operators because they also embrace another new concept, pipe pipeable operators. This allows us to use the operators a little bit different than before, also to improve usability and the bundle size. And this also led to some operators being renamed. Why? Well, you'll see that in a second. So these are the two important changes. An internal change in the project structure, so to say, in the package structure and in the exports and therefore in the way we have to import it and these pipeable operators. Now let's have a look at how this actually affects our existing code and how we can easily update without that command I showed you because that of course is the quickest way. Let's start with the changed imports. In general, in the past you had imports like this. Import observable from rxjs observable or import subject from rxjs slash subject. In the future, you'll just have import observable, subject and so on from rxjs, no slash something. For operators, you typically used import rxjs slash add slash operator slash map or rxjs slash rx if you wanted to import everything. Now in the future, you import operators separately with import map for example from rxjs slash operators. So this is very similar to the First update where you import observable from RxJS, you get a second import destination slash operators and you get your operators from there. Now if you have observable creation methods like from promise, in the past you used import RxJS, add observable from promise to patch this function into the observable um, object so to say. In the future you'll import from promise from RxJS, so from the same path where you import the um, observable and then you execute it just as a function you don't add it you don't chain it to the observable object but we'll see all this in a second. So the general important thing to take away is you got two new import destinations from rxjs and from rxjs slash operators. Speaking of operators we got pipeable operators now which simply means that this will become this. So not only do the import statements change here, as I just explained, on our observable, some observable, in the past we chained all these operators, map, throttle, and then we finally subscribed. In the future, with RxJS 6 and higher, we use that special pipe method on the observable, and that method takes an infinite amount of arguments, where each argument is simply an operator function. So here we add map, throttle, and so on as arguments, 
And these operators continue to work as they did, we just add them like this, we don't chain them to the observable. In the end, we still subscribe. Now due to these pipeable operators, some operators needed to be renamed because they clashed with reserved words in JavaScript. Because we're not calling them as methods anymore, they're now normal functions. So they must not be named like JavaScript keywords. Therefore, do becomes tab because do is a reserved keyword in JavaScript. Catch becomes catch error for the same reason. Well, all these operators were renamed for this reason in the end. Switch becomes switch all. Finally becomes finalize and not an operator, but a method which allows us to create observables. Throw, which we could also chain to the observable object in the past, becomes a standalone method like all observable creation methods and it's now throw error because throw also is a keyword. With that, let's see how this works in code. How can we actually update an existing project to RxJS6? Here's an Angular project, but of course this affects any project using RxJS6. But in this Angular project, in my app component, I have some valid RxJS operator and observable usage that would have worked in the past. We're doing a HTTP request with the Angular HTTP client. We get back an observable therefore, and we first of all map to extract our data and well, change its structure. Then I use catch and finally I subscribe. Instead of map, we could have also used merge map. Um, I just added this here so that I can show how this is renamed. So this is the old way of using observables and operators and here are the old imports. Now, as you can see in my package.json file, I'm using Angular 6 and I'm using RxJS version 6, a release candidate here, but still version 6. Therefore, if I run ng-surf and I try to bring up my development server, I get the CLI warning, but we can't ignore this. More importantly is that when it tries to build my project, it will fail. And it does fail with cannot find module RxJS compat observable. Now, this error is thrown because I'm using the old import uh, styles here. And by default, the RxJS package tries to find that compat package so that you don't have to do anything but install that package to make that old syntax work. So what we can do is, can stop that server and run npm install dash dash save rxjs dash compat. And this will install this compatibility package. Once we hit enter, this will, well, download and install it. And once this is done, we can run ng-surf and now it will compile an, our entire project and bring up that development server. And it will start without errors. Now, once it did start, we can load our app and indeed it works as before. These are the blog posts loaded via the Angular HTTP client and handled through observables. So this is the quickest way of getting our old code to work. Now we get an error here for throw because this was actually renamed, but as a chained um, operator, this still works, so we can ignore this error. But let's now update to our XJS6 without using that compat package. Though I will note that using it is absolutely fine doesn't add a lot of size to your bundle and makes your code work. So definitely a great in-between step and a great step in case you got some code you just can't get to work otherwise. But let's now get rid of it. So I'll quit my server here and I'll run npm uninstall save rxjs compat simply just to remove it both from my um, package.json file and from the node modules folder. And therefore if I run ng-serve we'll be back to getting an error of course. Now let's update our code then to work again, to not have this error anymore. And for this, we first of all need to change our imports. Observable, for example, is imported from just RxJS without slash observable. Now this is also not needed anymore. This way of importing operators, now this previously imported all operators, so this was an option to this syntax anyways. But this also is not needed anymore and will directly import the operators but we have to use the different syntax for this. So now we simply import the operators from our XJS operators. And from there we import map in our case, because that's really only the operator we're using. We also got throw and off, but these are simply ways of creating a new observable. So we import them from our XJS off and throw error is the new name actually. So this is also 
a renamed one because throw, just like catch and so on, is a reserved keyword. Now we can get rid of these imports too. And now this is our updated import syntax. Now we need to change the way we use that map operator. We use pipe instead and there we just pass this map function without the dot because we're now not calling this as a method, it's now a function. We pass this map function as an argument. And if we had more than one operator, we would simply chain it thereafter. So if we were also using the tab operator, we would put our tab code here as a second argument in the pipe method. We of course would have to import tab too. Now catch actually is another operator which we need to import. So that was missing, so let's import catch and this was renamed to catch error as I said. So import catch error from RxJS operators. And with that we also do chain this here after map. We have catch error and we got our error here. Now observable throw is not correct anymore, it's just throw error like this. And with that we can now safely subscribe here. Merge map if you used it would be smoosh map added to the pipe uh, chain here. With all that now we can save that and rerun our development server and now it should work because now we updated the import paths and we're using the new pipeable operators. And this does indeed look good. If we reload it works as before and if I open the console we also don't see any errors there. So now we updated this project to RxJS 6 with the quick way, the RxJS compat package or by changing the imports and by using pipeable operators. As you saw this wasn't too difficult either, it was just some extra work but in the end the upgrade path is really smooth, not too problematic. And I hope this is helpful and helps you upgrade your next Angular or whatever project to RxJS 6.